the way you know we are more um what's the word um output driven nowadays so like people judge you so much on what based on what you, based can on what you can achieve and all that so there's so much pressure on everybody to you know achieve 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 career Show career up. career you know and that kind of pressure can easily predispose you to having one form of anxiety especially with the social phobia because that has to do with having um a fear of embarrassment or scrutiny when you have to be involved in an activity where people are going to have the chance to actually scrutinize you or people have the chance to or make you feel embarrassed so like having so like what i'm doing today it's um it causes some anxiety because i'm going to now talk to it's going to be on youtube isn't it yeah so the whole world is going to watch and i'm wondering um what are people going to say about what i'm going to say are people actually going to say that oh he doesn't know what he's talking about um he looks like this you know i was, talk, I was worried about my hair not being brushed people are going to say that oh you're, you're going to be on tv and you, you, you didn't even like prepare properly you don't look like you're supposed to be on tv no makeup whatever it's okay for me to worry about those things but when it gets to a point where now that worry about those things make me decide that i'm not going to show up at all yeah or i feel an illness so that i don't show i don't have to do it i mean it's not showing up so it's easy but so that's okay it's sort of acceptable but going to far um doing so much to make sure that you don't have to do it for instance taking some pills so i have loose tools or so i um, i know cutting myself so i have an injury so that i don't have to do it is considered an, a, a disorder so that's where that's a problem so it's an abnormality that needs treatment and that is typically how social anxiety disorder is so i that's guess the it's common form, that's the most common yes i guess it's from there's a pressure of um pressures of the expectations that people have of each other in this current world the hustle and bustle um woke culture <laughs> yeah so so what should one do when they are confronted with um some of these things that drive them to literally want to do something to not show up yeah um what about these instances where um i mean events or programs or parties or being around people uh, i may not necessarily have the social um, anxiety, anxiety disorder okay. of um, work relatedness or performance relatedness but just people in general and having to be an active participant in that sense w w w how how do you navigate such a thing yeah so um if it's, it's such that it makes you makes it difficult for you to do the things that you want to do like i mentioned earlier then it's it's a problem it's impairing your functioning so you definitely need help and so you need to seek mental help depending on i mean like i said i did see a psychiatrist they talk to you sometimes the way you think of the problem might not be how it's it's exactly because it might actually be more severe than you think because you might not even realize it yourself and so they go into all your problems talk to you about how it is sometimes you may have to speak to people around you for instance your parents or the people you work with to see the gravity of their problem and then when a diagnosis is made depend on the severity like i said you need treatments and treatment involves medications and psychotherapy so typically if it's mild the psychiatrist might just say go see the psychologist and they'll have a number of um, sessions with you therapy sessions and then they get to help you deal with those um thoughts because the thing about low mental illness is that it has to do with the mind okay so it's about thoughts feelings emotions and maybe we'll talk about that a bit later but how these anxiety disorders arise have a lot to do with our thinking our adaptive mechanisms our defense mechanisms and things like that so the the, the psychologists will go into those things and help you realize them and then show you ways of dealing with them better so that you don't have that kind of um um breakdown in in those systems and then you can actually face uh, the situations that you previously wouldn't be able to face so you basically need to see uh, a psychiatrist get diagnosed gets diagnosed and then get that proper treatment which is involves psychotherapy and medications for an anxiety is all that typically the treatment medication wise would take months so that's what a lot of people typically are not happy with 
the fact that you need to take medications for so long because nobody wants to take medications for a very long time. It's not like, I always say that, it's not like malaria where you take medications for three days, maximum five days, you're better and don't need the medication. Even when you are better after taking medications for a couple of weeks or months, you still need to be on the medications to prevent the illness from recurring. Okay, so typically you have to be on medication for about six months to a year. And that depends on the response to the medication. And there are so many options when it comes to treatment. So if one, medic one medicine doesn't work for you, the psychiatrist will then have to change to another one, which might work for you. And then it goes on and on until you are better. And then you can go on to take it for about six months, depending on how things go. And then eventually they'll reduce the doses gradually and then you stop. And then after you stop, sometimes you need psychotherapy to, to also support you, yeah. to make you keep on and then ensure that you remain well. And then you can live your life normally again. So it sounds like it's simple, but... It's not really yeah, it's simple. Yeah, it's not that simple, yeah.